Hi, I'm Hope from Honolulu. Please like and subscribe to 4EVE. My parents always said I was born beautiful. I received so many compliments and modeling offers for baby products that they launched my modeling career when I was just three. But I never really knew my parents. When I was six, they started a clothing line named after me and got really busy with it. So they mostly left my older sister Leilani in charge and she hated me. You promised we'd play with the dolls. You can't always be the center of the universe. I have to take this call. Fashion Kids Magazine wants you again. She'd always lie and say we'd do one thing, but we'd do another thing instead. And I'd suffer. You said after my fashion show, we'd go home. I'm tired. Just sign a few more autographs and don't be so ungrateful. Sometimes I wondered if she was so mean to me because she was jealous of my fame. Once when I was 12, I was at a signing event and I escaped from the crowd. I stumbled into an alley where a girl my age was looking through the trash with her mom. I offered them some snacks from my bag and their reaction was so wonderful. Just then, Leilani found me and dragged me away. And later, when we were on a video call with our parents, she told them what had happened. Hope, it's not okay to sneak off like that. And that poor family could have robbed you. Or taken a lock of your hair to sell on eBay. No, they were nice and I liked helping them. Nonsense. You're too busy and famous to be doing anything else. Anyway, we heard your sister booked you on a morning show for the launch of your new toy line. Little Hope dolls. They're gonna sell like hotcakes. Sometimes it felt like my parents just used me for money. In fact, I felt people were friends with me for the same selfish reasons. But I never gave up on the idea of using my wealth for good. When I turned 14, I held my first fundraising event for homeless people and it was a big success. But my second fundraiser turned into a complete nightmare because the day after it, my face was all over the news with the words, teen thief. Hope, they're saying you kept all the funds for your business. What? Why would they think I took all that money? The news is saying they got an anonymous tip. This can't be good for your career. It's all over social media. They're calling it the biggest scandal of the year. You need to stop all this charity nonsense. We need to work on saving your reputation so you won't lose out on any modeling contracts. I didn't care if I never modeled again. I didn't understand how anyone could think I'd steal charity money. I was too embarrassed to even leave the mansion. Soon after, I was about to join a new high school and I went to Leilani with an odd request. Help me make a disguise for high school. You're my makeup artist. If anyone can do it, it's you. Look, it's hard for me to trust people. They'll probably use me for my money and fame or spread more lies. I'd rather just go as a regular kid so I can be active in the school's charity clubs. You don't think you could just go as yourself? Doubtful. I always become the center of attention without meaning to. And because of that scandal, the charity clubs might not trust me. I just want to fade into the background and do the things I care about. Please. To my shock, she agreed to the makeover. It gave me cute short hair as part of my disguise. I decided to keep my disguise a secret from my parents. They were not happy about my short hair, but my agent had advised me to take a break from modeling and stay out of the public eye anyway till the scandal died down. At home, I was Hope, the supermodel on a break. But at school, I was Minnie, the humanitarian. I joined the charity club and the volunteer work I was doing felt amazing. And I was making friends pretty easily. But one day at school, I was lifting a heavy box of canned food donations when I suddenly threw out my back. Whoa, are you okay? I suddenly noticed there were two really cute guys watching me struggle to stand up straight. Guess I'm an old lady who's not used to heavy lifting. <laughs> Ouch. Let's take you to the school nurse, Granny. I'm Kai. And I'm Crane. Here, let me take your bag. What was in that box? Canned stuff for a food drive. Crane immediately dropped my bag to the floor. You're part of a food drive? Not gonna help you. What? Come on, Nan. Let's just take her to the nurse. She's hurt. Whatever. Not my problem. And then he just left. What was that about? Are you seriously doing a stupid food drive, Granny? My name is Ho Minnie, and what's wrong with food drives? Ho Minnie? Minnie. Everything about them is wrong, Minnie. If the poor just got off their butts and worked, they wouldn't be poor. Why should we treat them like babies and take money from people who do work? Wow. Sometimes it's hard for people to find work or earn enough and they need help. Maybe lame losers do. Well, Minnie, here you are. Kai winked at me as he left. What a jerk. But I wasn't going to let his arrogant opinion stop me. I organized a school dance to raise funds for the food drive and it was a hit. But just as I was dancing with some friends, Kai and Crane busted through the gym doors with crowns on their heads. 
to the rich. Stand with the rich. What are you doing, Kai? We're here to tell everyone the poor are pathetic and charities are scams. Don't be fooled. Just then, Crane started kicking down the display of food donations like a maniac. Luckily, the teachers there kicked both out before they could do more damage. What planet were these jerks from? But I forgot all about them when I got home that afternoon and saw Dad running out to me. Didn't you check your phone, Hope? I think the battery died. What's wrong? Your mom and sister got into a car accident, <gasps> but the doctor said they'll be okay. They both had some broken bones and will need bed rest. I started to cry, and Dad hugged me. I couldn't remember the last time he'd done that. And I decided I'd stay home for the next few weeks to take care of Mom and Leilani. The next evening, my bodyguard drove me down to the food bank to drop off the school's donations. To my shock, I saw Kai step out of his car in front of us, and he was dropping off bags of donations. What the hot <gasps> fudge? I snapped a picture of him, and I confronted Kai in the school hallway the next day. Saw you at the shelter last night. What are you talking about? This. How did you... Okay, please, listen. Crane is against charity work, not me. He convinced me to think that way a long time ago, but I don't agree with him anymore. Years ago, Crane's family fell into a big scam by some fake charity, and they lost a huge fortune. Oh no. Yeah, his dad had to work so hard just to get them back on their feet. Now, he talks trash about all charities, and he doesn't trust the poor. He actually enjoys shutting charity work down in public. He bullied me into crashing that dance. And well, I'm sorry I did, really. He looked really sincere. If that's the truth, I understand. But you gotta stand up to Crane sometime. You can't keep pretending to be someone you're not. Kai offered to walk me to class, but I explained I was just there to collect my books as I was homeschooling for a while. He asked for my number, and I kinda left with butterflies in my stomach. Kai and I texted every day for weeks, and he even started coming over. I kept saying it was best to give my mom and sister space to recover, so we'd always hang out in my backyard. Keeping Minnie away from my parents and Hope away from Kai was getting exhausting. I was also developing the biggest crush on the real Kai. He was nothing like the jerk I'd first met. Once I found him waiting for me in my backyard with the most amazing picnic laid out. Hey, what's all this? Just a little surprise for your big day. Happy birthday, Minnie. Um, Kai, my birthday isn't for another five months. What? Really? I looked for you over social media, but I couldn't find you because you're apparently the world's most private person. Then I went to go check the school records, and I guess I got the wrong mini. <laughs> well, I guess so. But thanks anyway. It's the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Just as I sat down, Kai opened a bottle of soda, and the cork went flying straight into my eye. Oh my god. I am so sorry, Minnie. Wait, stop rubbing your eye and let me see. He lifted my chin gently as he looked deep into my eyes. Your eyes? Um, they're... Yes? They're what? They're not the same color. What? Suddenly I realized that my contact lens had fallen out. Oh, my lens must have popped out when I rubbed my eye. <laughs> I wear them for my eyesight because I'm as blind as a bat. I see. But why would you wear those green lenses and hide your lovely blue eyes? His face was so close and I didn't have an answer to his question. So I just kissed him. He looked really surprised, but then he kissed me back and it felt wonderful. Soon after, Kai and I hosted a fundraising car wash for a soup kitchen, but suddenly a car honked at us angrily. Well, what do we have here? Crane, listen buddy, I know how you feel about this stuff, but I'm asking you to back off. I want to do this. What? Support lying, dirty thieves? Did you forget what happened to my family? Of course not, but that was one bad experience. Not all charities are scams. It's this witch. Winnie's brainwashed you. It's Minnie? And Kai is free to do whatever he wants, but you need to leave. Just then, Crane went red. He threw a punch at Kai, but Kai blocked it brilliantly and stepped back. Crane, walk away right now. You better watch yourself, Winnie, or you'll end up like that stupid teen thief model who raised funds for her business. She got what she deserved. She's a forgotten fraud now, a nobody. Suddenly, I froze in my spot. Was it possible that Crane had started that rumor? He was crazy enough to do it. And what if Kai had been involved back then too? Crane drove off angrily and Kai turned to me. This may be the end of my friendship with Crane, but I feel relieved. I'm proud of how you stood up to him. Kai smiled at me warmly, but now I felt guarded. Did I fall for someone who might have framed me? Later that evening, as he drove me home, 
Kai suddenly took my hand. Minnie, I love who you are and who you've helped me become. Will you be my girlfriend? Kai, no, I can't. What? Why? I thought you felt the same way. You kissed me. And maybe that was a mistake. I'm sorry, but I can't be with you. Not only did I feel paranoid about trusting him, he had no idea I was hope. I hated lies, and now I hated lying. Things were a mess. Kai begged to see me and kept messaging me, but I just ignored him until he gave up. One afternoon, I was fluffing Leilani's pillows when she asked me something unexpected. Hope, how are you? Not bad. Why? Nothing. I just noticed that you looked a bit sad these days. I kind of lost someone I cared about. Wait, Leilani, why are you crying? Oh, Hope, I just need to tell you something. I can't keep it in any longer, especially after you've taken such good care of me. And to my shock, she confessed how she was the one who had started the rumor that I'd stolen the charity funds. I know it was really wrong, and I'm sorry, but I just got so resentful. I was left in charge of you, and you always came first. And you were always in the limelight, while I never even got thanks for anything I did. I got carried away. Leilani, how could you? I really regret it. That's why I agreed to your makeover request, because I didn't want to stand in your way again. I know how good-hearted you really are. Do you know what you've done? I immediately thought of Kai, this great guy, and how I'd shut him out. I wanted to slap Leilani, but I just stormed off angrily. I told Mom what Leilani had done and said I couldn't stand to be around her right now. To my shock, Mom agreed that I should take a break from her. We arranged for me to stay at my bodyguard's house, and I found out that he lived close to Kai. On my first night there, I walked over to Kai's place. I needed to fix things between us, but his butler informed me that he'd gone to Tokyo for two weeks or longer. My heart sank. For three days, I texted and called Kai, but he never answered. I knew he was avoiding me, and I deserved it, but I wasn't giving up. I called mom and explained everything about Kai to her, and she actually listened. Tokyo might be a nicer break for you. OMG, mom, you'd let me go? Yes, sweetheart. Ever since the accident, your dad and I have been thinking how hard we've pushed you and your sister. We just wanted you girls to know success early on, but we've realized there are more important things than success and money, like happiness and family. You've been amazing during our recovery, honey, and you really deserve to go. Thanks, mom. I love you. And the next day, I was on a flight to Tokyo with my bodyguard and checked into the same hotel as Kai. Just as I stepped onto the elevator, I was shocked to see Kai inside. He looked awkwardly at me. Hi, can I help you with something? I suddenly realized he couldn't recognize me without my disguise. Kai, you're the reason I'm here. I came to tell you the truth. I'm Minnie. Minnie? Minnie from Honolulu? Yes, except my real name is Hope. What? I told him everything. My trust issues and my disguise and what my sister did, how awful I felt for abandoning him, and how I tried calling him. I'm using a different phone here, and I understand why you wanted to hide yourself, Hope. I've missed you. Do you think we could give us another chance? You flew all the way here to make things right? I'd be a jerk if I say no. But could you do just one thing? Give your sister another chance? Come on, charity starts at home. I will, I promise. <laughs>